at Kentucky, John Calipari has used this diamond motion to create easy scoring opportunities for guards coming off of screens, but he has also used it to build a great counter playbook based around false motion. In this breakdown, we're going to look at what false motion is, which is basically dummy motion before a set, why teams would use this false motion, is it beneficial, and we're going to look at specifically this year and from the 2019-20 season, how Kentucky started to set teams up to run great counters and add to his playbook. My name is Coach Gibson Piper. You can follow me on Twitter at Half Court Hoops, especially now because I'm putting out a lot of past NCAA tournament sets looking back at the last 15 years since there's no actual live games, so check me out on there. False motion is just basically any sort of actions or setups that you want to run before your actual initial play or initial set is run. So Purdue does a good job in their weave series hiding what they're actually trying to do for easy scores. NC Central Lavelle Moten one of my favorite coaches to watch. He runs a little weave action before the actual play takes place. And what this is basically doing is getting the defense to guard some basic action before what you actually really want to run. So it's an easy way to free up you know, your quick hitting counters. It doesn't allow them to see what you're setting up in. So you're not just setting up in a play. Uh, Princeton teams will like to run some false motion or just some dummy motion. Maybe burn out you know, 15 seconds of the shot clock. And high school teams don't have a shot clock. So they would just run some basic action before the actual play that you want to run. Sort of setting up the team to kind of lull them to sleep or draw them into maybe trying to guard a couple actions before what you actually want to run. Kentucky utilizes this in their diamond. Here you can see the play call is sort of like a loop motion, two fingers up in a loop. Uh, and then what they set up is they set up this diamond action, which is just two bigs and two guards in a diamond formation. Their whole goal of this play is to free up a shooter in this scenario, it's Emmanuel Quickly. Kentucky will choose and pick different players to run this action for. They run it for Maxi. they even run it for Hagens, just so they can disguise what they're actually trying to do. The whole goal is to get a player coming off a screen. Typically, it's going to be the player that catches the ball on the wing after the first reversal is who they're going to look to get coming off of these screens. So here you can see Quickly is going to come off this little back screen, run across, read his defender goes over the top, and then come back the opposite direction and gets a wide open look from three. Essentially, the two bigs' main responsibility is just a screen for that player coming off of the screens low. The other two players, when the ball passes to the wing, will exchange or screen down in the middle. And that player that's screened down or is now in the middle or near the nail of the floor will then remain opposite of the player coming off of those screens so his defender is not able to help and they're not able to switch off of that. In this example, we'll see how as a player comes off the screen and the guards exchange, when quickly runs baseline here, we're going to see the player in the middle of the nail here is going to come and clear opposite and that allows quickly to curl into space and catch and shoot. Kentucky will run this diamond action quite a bit in each game for different players at different times so it's important for us to know how the basics of this diamond works so that way we can when we get into the details and we can show how the rest of the series is really effective based out of this one play. Now let's take a look at how Kentucky uses their diamond or this false motion to get into different sets. Here we're going to see them go into a ram ball screen. So you can see the guard here is going to screen down on the bigs defender. And then that creates a late hedge opportunity. Max is going to do a really good job of splitting this pick and roll and a nice avoid finish. When Ashton Hagens or any of the Kentucky point guards are in the game, they'll actually run him off of this diamond motion coming off first. He'll kick back to the guard and then almost cut off of this like zipper screen to the middle of the floor. Once he gets the ball back, that triggers them to run their play. In this scenario, it's a high ball screen, almost like a horns dive play. It's hard to guard because the defense is not set and they're not recognizing what they're in all the time. Teams in the past for Kentucky have used this action to get guards like Shea Gilgis Alexander involved and get them set up in a spread pick and roll. 
uh, specifically in the NCAA tournament, they definitely went to this action a lot more, where they would get the ball back to him and then run like a spread ball screen, um, or just have a normal basic ball screen out of it, not so much high ball screen. And they also ran this into horns, so you'd see them run this kind of false motion, get the ball back to the point guard, and then go right into horns. Pretty tough to guard if you had to guard a couple of things before that and then the bigs flash right into horns. So we can see how Calipari kind of tweaks his system and his different plays for different teams. Another way Kentucky disguises or uses false motion is what I just call their pitch or their weave series. They run basically five main actions off of this series with the main one being a spread pick and roll where essentially they just reverse the ball to a big who's lifted, they go handoff and then pass back to the point guard and then it goes into whatever action or set that they're running. Because this is common enough action in their offense, especially for spread pick and roll, they actually use this to disguise their diamond series as well. So they go handoff and back to the point guard and then they go right into diamond. So it maybe looks like they're gonna run a different action but then it flows into what they're trying to actually run which is their, their floppy or diamond action for the shooters. I haven't seen them run the uh, pitch action into a diamond action into another set. I don't know if there's enough time for that in the shot clock, but uh, it's just another good way for them to disguise what they're actually trying to do and what they're trying to run. Now this is where Kentucky's diamond false motion really starts to take shape in the form of counters, with my favorite one being diamond rip. Rip is just a term for a back screen that I use, so I just use the formation diamond into a back screen. So we can see here the normal play being run, looks like diamond action, looks like they're gonna just run their normal, you know, look to get shooters open, then all of a sudden the guard inside is gonna set a cross screen or almost like a mini back screen for the big, in this case it's Richards looking to get a quick easy post up or a quick easy score off of it. They uh, hurt a lot of teams running this action uh, this year, especially uh, in like quick hitting counters when they need buckets. You can see in overtime against Louisville Hill, they run to this action, got a quick easy score off of it to help propel them to victory. In this example, we're gonna see how they use the rip action as decoy now, and this decoy action is gonna be set up for a post up. So we can see this normal would be a back screen here. Richards is gonna turn and spin and sit on his man. This would normally be a cross screen or a back screen where the big is gonna kinda of jump over top of it to be ready for it. They hit it with the reverse action and allows for a deep post ups for an easy post up opportunity. One of my favorite actions is when Kentucky runs their diamond, they will lift the big as the player on the wing catches it, allowing a baseline drive downhill. So in this scenario, we're gonna see as Maxi catches it, Richards is gonna step and lift out, leaving the baseline wide open for a baseline drive to drive to his strong hand, his right hand for an easy finish. They'll do this often as reads in the game and just kinda of as their, their basic uh, package but you'll see them this will be designed in like a set play so you can see as he catches it here Montgomery's gonna lift up automatically creating space creates a lot of advantages for their drivers to get downhill if the baseline drive is not available defense does a good job stopping that you can see the flow is going into like a two-man game on the side so you see dribble handoffs you'll see ball screens different reads out of it they'll actually flow into a side ball screen at times as well off of this essentially this is just allowing players to make plays forcing the defense to guard baseline then going right into a dribble handoff little two-man game one of my favorite actions to watch as well as run in my offense is ghost screens i just use that term as a fake ball screen uh, where you don't even make contact with a defender. It's similar to a slip, but it's more designed for a pick and pop. What this does is creates a little bit of confusion defensively. If the big hedges or the player defending hedges, then it creates an easier pick and pop opportunity. And if they don't, then it could create a downhill driving lane. Kentucky utilizes this in their diamond action where the big or the player opposite will sprint out into like a side ball screen and fake it and allow the guard to try and turn the corner and get downhill easier. Kentucky has also gone to Spain ball screen, where the back screen on the ball screen, it's been one of the most popular sets in the NBA and in EuroLeague for a long time now. 
cover that extensively but here we're gonna see the kind of false motion then go into what they call stack you can see the play call here stack which is basically a back screen on the ball screeners man Vanderbilt doesn't do a great job uh, covering it here we're gonna see them do a good job switching guard to guard but the big gets picked off it's really tough action to guard especially if you don't set it up and the defense doesn't know it's coming this is action we've run at the high school level now it's kind of trickled down and it's just been really effective action for every team it's good to see Kentucky running it thank you so much for watching this video guys I really appreciate it hope everybody's staying safe out there I'm gonna do some more detailed series breakdowns coming up on uh, like Louisville and Duke and, and certain teams as I finish their playbooks at the end of the season here. If you have any questions or any follow-ups, please hit me up on Twitter at Half Court Hoops. Uh, you can follow me on there. I'll be tweeting out a lot of uh, videos and stuff with a lot of free time here now. Any suggestions you have, please let me know. Hope everybody has a great rest of the day.